So this video is going to look at finding inverses of block matrices if you actually have a lower triangular block matrix and you still want to use the upper triangular block matrix formula. Turns out it is relatively straightforward. You just have to use one trick and the trick is to use transposes. So I'm going to look at specifically the eighth problem in um, web work that deals with block matrices. So at the beginning, it gives you the same formula that we've had in class with upper triangular matrices. You've got the upper triangular block matrix right here, the two main blocks along that top row of blocks, the zero matrix on, for the first block on the second row of blocks, and then that you, in this case, is a special case where you only have a single element for that very last block. Then it goes ahead and gives you what the formula is for a inverse. It tells you, hey, you take the inverse matrix of that first block, first row, first column. It Zero matrix stays the zero matrix. The inverse of D is 1 over D. The single element, whatever it is, you just take the reciprocal. And the, upper the last upper block right over here is the formula negative 1 over D times the inverse matrix of 1, 1, the same guy you already calculated, times the original block in that location, A, 1, 2. Okay. Now, problem is you can't use this formula exactly without some adjustment because the matrix we're given here is a lower triangular matrix. So the trick is we're actually going to take the transpose of this matrix A, the transpose of a lower triangular matrix is always an upper triangular matrix. Then we'll calculate the inverse of that new upper triangular matrix and use the property that says, hey, the inverse of the original lower triangular matrix is just that inverse of the upper triangular matrix, and then you take the transpose. So what we do is we'll take the transpose twice. First, we'll take the transpose of this guy. We'll calculate the inverse of the transpose using the formula, and then that answer, that inverse answer, you'll take the transpose the last time, and that's what you actually enter in into these blocks down here, these empty text boxes down here. Note, that'll be something that'll be relatively straightforward. Why? Because when we calculate the inverse straight off the formula, this guy right here won't actually be the first row. It'll end up being the first cup. So it'll be a little bit different in terms of where we calculate these things. Okay, so let's actually do this. Okay, so what I did for us first is I copied down our formula and I already transposed that um, given matrix that we had. So all of the columns in the original matrix turned into rows, all of the rows in the original matrix turned into columns. And notice the one thing that's funky here, why you can't plug it into a calculator, one of the entries is an H. What does that mean? That means in your final answer, you're going to get some values of H come out there. So first thing that I would recommend doing is actually determine where your blocks are going to live in this matrix. These blocks in this matrix will exactly correspond to the partition lines or the blocks in the original matrix A as well. Now, there's a bunch of different things you could do, but since this formula that that question gave you said, hey, look, you've got a single element down here on this lower block, that tells you that you should probably put in, if you want to use this formula, the line, your block lines or your partition lines like this. Why like that? So that this lower block, second row, second column, is a single entry. Notice this does guarantee that you have all zeros, which is what you need. And then you have a square matrix, which is what you need for A11. And then A22 is this guy. Or since this guy is now named B, I'm going to go ahead and rename this. This would be B12. This whole guy here would be B11. This guy here is your zero matrix or B21. And this guy here is B22, or in the formula, the same thing as your D. Okay. Notice in your formula, what do you have to calculate? You have to know the inverse of this block. So we'll go ahead and calculate that in just a second. You also have to know what D is. Our D is 2, so 1 over D is going to be 1 half. And you also have to know what this block um, A12 is. And it looks like I wrote that formula down a little bit backwards, so I'll go and fix that here in just a second. All right, so I went back in and fixed the formula. So this formula here is B. I went ahead and also changed the A's to B since we're talking about this adjusted matrix B down here as well. So you take your first block first row, first column, take its inverse. 
zero stays zero. The little one element guy turns into its reciprocal. And over here, first row, second column turns into one over D, negative one over D times the inverse matrix that you found of B11's inverse, and then the original block matrix of B12. Okay. Now, went ahead and rewrote out for us B12. Notice it's got the H involved in that last location. The inverse of the single matrix 2 is just 1 half. And then I went ahead and calculated this matrix for us right here, specifically the inverse of that matrix. I'm not going to lie, I didn't do it by hand, I totally plugged it into a calculator. So here in terms of what I did for this matrix, I actually said, hey, we want this new matrix B. In terms of the size of this matrix B, well, our matrix, that block matrix of B11 was size 4 by 4. So I need to get it four rows and four columns, and then I just typed in the numbers. So five, the next number was negative 10, the next number was negative five, and so forth. And then as long as you don't type it in wrong or plug in the values incorrectly, um, you're ready to go ahead and say, hey, you know what? Let me then just take the inverse of this guy. And notice over here, these are, well, it's in fraction. If we want it in fractional form, we can go ahead and convert it to fractional form. And these are the exact same numbers that um, we wrote off on the other page. Okay, so let's pull that down. Same guys right there, assuming I didn't mistype it. Now, at this point, what do you need? You're still looking for what's going on in our inverse matrix. Of the four blocks, three of them we can fill in right now. So just applying our formula, we fill in the inverse of that block in the first row first column, the zero matrix, and the reciprocal of the single one by one matrix. Okay, We still have this missing block that's given by that formula up top, the one that I had to correct for us earlier. Okay, So to compute that missing piece, our formula is negative one over D, B11's inverse, B12. So here we'll have negative one half, and then we'll write down both the inverse of B11 and B12. So now we just have to calculate that matrix multiplication. So if we do that, we'll have negative one half out front. We're going to multiply each row in the first matrix by each column in the second matrix. Oh, wait, there's one column in the second matrix, so just each row in the first matrix by that one column. So we'll have, neg we'll have positive 1 fifth times 5, that's 1. 1 times negative 8, that's negative 8. 5 over 4 times negative 4, so that's negative 5. And negative 2 times h, that's negative 2h. Don't overthink it. Then we'll repeat the exact same process for each of the next rows. The next row will multiply by the column. 0 times anything is 0. 1 half by negative 8 is negative 4. 1 half by negative 4 is negative 2. And then we'll get negative 3 fourths h. Then we'll look at our next row in this matrix. So we multiply that next row by the column matrix. And we'll have 0 times 5 is 0. 0 times negative 8 is 0. 1 fourth times negative 4 is negative 1. And then negative 1 half h. And then the last thing we'll have is the unhighlighted row times the column. The three zeros will zero out, and we'll simply have one-fourth H. So all we have to do at this stage is just simplify this down, and we'll go ahead and do that. Now, in order to put this component in its location over here in the block matrix, don't forget you have to multiply through by the negative one-half. So when you multiply through by negative one-half, we'll get positive six plus h. The second line will be positive three plus three over eight. The next line down will be positive one-half plus one-fourth h. And the last line will be negative one-eighth h. And at this point, that's the stuff that would be in that one remaining missing block, okay? Now, once you plug that in, please note what you're gonna get. You're gonna get B inverse. 
but B was the transpose of A. So this won't be the actual answer you'll see on web work. Instead, when you want to get back to the inverse of regular old A, you're going to have to take B inverse and then undo the transpose operation we did previously by taking the transpose a second time. This then would be the stuff that you're plugging into uh, web work. I would highly recommend making sure that you write out everything beforehand. That way it's easier to plug it in into web work. But in terms of dealing with block matrices, that's the idea of dealing with um, some manipulation with block matrices.